Hi, this is Rich Scheidner. And if you've ever wondered what it was like to be a stand-up comedian in the 1980s, I'm going to do you a big favor. Instead of billions of dollars for a time machine, you can just spend $24.95 and buy my new book, Kicking Through the Ashes, My Life as a Stand-Up in the 1980s Comedy Boom. It will save you money and give you thrills. It will take you there. Go to my website, richscheidner.com. Go to amazon.com and buy this book. Hi, I'm Ina Alice Kopp. I'm starring in Flytrap, and you're watching Mr. Media. I'm Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview. You can see, hear, and read more than a thousand of my previous celebrity interviews at mrmedia.com. That's mrmedia.com. Subscribe to the show on YouTube, iTunes, Apple News, Google Play, or Stitcher, and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. On today's show, I'll welcome Austrian actress Ina Alice Kopp, star of a new indie sci-fi erotic drama, Flytrap. This movie is proof you don't need a special effects budget of millions of dollars if you have the right out-of-this-world concept and a little imagination. <laughs> Stick around. Flytrap is the kind of fantasy that would scare the crap out of Donald Trump. What if there are aliens living among us, and they're from much farther away than Mexico or even Syria? And what if they don't want our jobs or money? What if they're really after our sperm? Now, I don't want to give away too much, but this indie erotic sci-fi thriller does more with a non-existent special effects budget than many Hollywood films can do with an unlimited budget. Flytrap stars British actor Jeremy Crutchley as Pond, James Pond, Austrian actress Ina Alice Kopp as Marianne, and American actor Jonah Blackman as Gilligan. And you heard those names right. There are sexy bits of fun all over this film. Now, joining me today from her native Austria, you are in Austria, right? I am. All right, just want to make sure that hadn't changed, is yeah. Ina Alice Kopp, whose character uh, of uh, Marianne is Stepford like is Stepford wife like in her total devotion to getting laid, which sounds like fun at first for James Pond, James Pond, but you know what they say about too much of a good thing. Ina Alice Cup, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you so much for having me. I I, I now feel guilty that I made you blush a few times when I <laughs> when I referred to uh, this is sort of a, an erotic sci-fi thriller. Did. Did, 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 has no one said that before? No, I've, I haven't. I've never heard that. Um, I guess that was sort of the goal, but um, I, I, I didn't think we succeeded. You know, I'm glad we did. Well, I mean, the whole—I don't know how much we want to give away here, but I mean, what what starts the film off and what keeps it going at times is your characters need to um, copulate. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, there's, there's things, some things we never do find out, but and, and I don't want to give away too much, but, I mean, Marianne is certainly driven by one thing, to the best of our knowledge. Yes. And uh, there are, you know, there are some sexy scenes. Uh, you, you, uh, you know, I mean, folks, look at the woman. I mean, you know, come on. She's very attractive, and, you know, <laughs> she's, she's constantly seeking uh, physical attention from Pond, James Pond. That was so cute. Demanding. I'm yeah, demanding, demanding is, is right. Exactly. I mean, and occasionally even provides him with bland food to keep him going. <laughs> yes, that's right. So, how did you get involved in this film? How was how was it presented to you, for example? Um, well, I I received a call from my manager one one evening, and uh, she said Stephen David Brooks called and he wants you to star in his new movie. And I'm like, oh, is that the one we talked about? And she's like, no, it's a different one. He just, you know, got fan financing for that, and he wants you to be in it. I'm like, well, have him sent the script. And so I read the script overnight, and um, and I loved it. I thought that it provided an opportunity for um, a lot of, uh, you know, acting, actual acting mm -hmm. scenes, you know, not, not post-production special effects, but like a very intimate almost stage-like play uh, because, you know, throughout most of the movie it's just Jeremy and I and then occasionally there's like a third or fourth uh, character 
mostly a third, and then we hear the voice of a fourth character. So I, I was really intrigued by the opportunity to, you know, play this arc uh, of this very unusual character, and 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 in a way, even though again without giving away too much, even though my character, you know, appears to be very single-minded, <laughs> very focused, if you will, and very mechanical at times, which you know, obviously was a, was a choice, an acting choice, I do feel like in the end what we're telling is a very touching, hopefully very touching, human love story. Um, and, and that is something that I like to do. <laughs> I really enjoy, you know, playing love stories. And so um, I didn't even pay too much attention to, like, the element of seduction at that point in time. Um, because that, to me, was just sort of a side effect of Marianne's mission, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and and but I but but I enjoyed you know thinking about this arc from from you know becoming very foreign um, to becoming very human yeah. with everything that uh, comes with it. Be you know feeling love, uh, giving birth. And eventually, dying, or well, we don't know for sure yet. We don't know for sure. Let's see. Yeah. Or might not be a sequel. So. <laughs> no, it's, um, so so yeah. And then I I I think I wrote Stephen a message, and I said that uh, I really enjoyed the script, and I'd be thrilled to be part of the project. And you know, at that point, he hadn't informed me earlier. Um, at that point, he had everything lined up to shoot like a month later. So uh, we immediately started getting together, had table reads, started discussing ideas for, uh, you know, co costume ideas, uh, you know, character ideas. Like I said to you before, I, um, I, I felt that, uh, you know, given how uh, most of the characters' names are taken from Gilligan's Island, I, I kind no of... No way. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you felt I felt very inspired, and I, I, I was thinking to myself, and at the time I was also binge-watching Mad Men. I think I was in season six at the time and just really intrigued by Betty Draper and Betty Draper's proper, beautiful 1950s housewifey look. And I felt like, well, what if she was that kind of character, just like perfect on the outside, but then eventually so, you know, perturbed on the inside? Is that even a word? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're doing you're doing great. I, I should I should point out at this point that that you speak something like seven or more languages. So, if if you six plus one six okay <laughs> doesn't really count. It's kind of you know passive. You read you read it. Okay. I guess. All right, it's still a lot. So go so go ahead. Um, um, so you 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 worked on your look and and presentation. This was this was this a lot of this came from you. Um. Yeah, and and also. Um, I think it also kind of came out of necessity because we, you know, uh, when we chose my character's wardrobe, we pretty much chose my character's wardrobe the night before the first day of shooting. And there really only was one dress that we kind of saw fit for the character. And I had noticed that that dress came in different versions. You know, like it came in a plain red and it came dotted and it came like with stripes or flowers. I can't remember. So I felt like, well, what if we just pick that one dress and then kind of get that same dress, um, uh, you know, in different versions, you know, to also emphasize my character's development. So her very simple red dress, you know, gets crazier and crazier <laughs> over the course of the, the story as the story evolves. So... Uh, yeah, so that's kind of, and, and I think we intentionally made an effort to make me not look modern or not look like, much like myself. Well, I think, I'm just as we're talking about this, I think we probably need to take a second and set up kind of what happens at the beginning of the film. Right. Um, uh, Jeremy Crutchley as uh, Pond, James Pond, uh, has landed in the United States. Is it California? Is that the... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's San Fernando Valley. And yeah. he's, he's supposed to be meeting a, a friend. And his car breaks down. Right. Uh, just quit. He's on his way to a teaching job at UCLA or USC, I believe. Okay. Just and, arriving from Europe. And his car just suddenly dies in front of your house. 
Right. And his phone dies. He has no. He can't use his car or his phone. So he does what anyone would do. He comes and knocks on the door, and expects just to be able to use the phone and get out. And uh, Marianne, your character, is very welcoming. It's very difficult for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he thinks he's hit the. Use the phone and get out. <laughs> he, he thinks he's hit the jackpot. Uh, he's offered wine, but Marianne doesn't drink wine. Uh, he's offered sex. It's like, it's getting a little weird. He just wants to use the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 did he land in, a, it, 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 you know, the followers of Charles Manson? What's going on here? And that's all I really want to say here is it, you know, it goes yeah. from kind of there. Um, had you ever met uh, your co-star, Jeremy uh, Crutchley, before? Uh, uh, no, I, uh, I met him uh, at our first table read at his house. And so the reason I ask is, uh, you two are at very close quarters throughout the entire shoot. Uh, you, you, uh, you know, you make love. You you sleep in the bed. You you dance. Uh, you have meals together. Well, he has Your meals. Abuse. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, and so you know when you especially in a, <laughs> yeah especially in a small budget film, I'm thinking you have to make up your mind pretty quickly. Is this someone who I can stand to be? right on top of for seven yeah. or ten or two weeks of shooting yeah you definitely hope that your co-star won't have bad breath you know <laughs> for sure so tell me about jeremy what was he what well was he he's amazing to? i mean we i i instantly liked him he's I, I mean there's no way you can not like jeremy he's you know he's he's brilliant he's incredibly talented he's so uh, you know well educated he's so well read he is so informed he has so much experience so many different kinds of interest he you know he's he's also uh, a brilliant musician um and he he just um really likes to dive deep into whatever it is he's doing and by the time we first met he had already done so much research and thought out his character and thought about the story and and even you know the the, the specifics of some scenes and movements uh, he was so you know uh, i kind of like showed up and i tried to wing it uh, but he is like a you know a trained stage actor with uh, uh, you know, a lot of stage experience and you know he had like a binder uh, and and like tons of like post-its and like little notes and stickies and like you know notes everywhere all and it was like I actually felt really bad for a second because I you know I felt the pressure I felt like I didn't work um, didn't you know work well hadn't done enough preparation although I tend to be also you know pretty I usually show up pretty prepared and I, I do my own kind of analysis of the script and, and the character something that that works for me um, and so so yeah it was impressive and frightening at the same time but then Jeremy you know he's such a he's such a generous person really uh, and he, he's like that on set too he's extremely generous and giving and very patient and um, he's, he's he's great to work with he really is you know and what about Gilligan, Jonah Blackman? Oh my God, <laughs> another man I love. He's, he, I mean, same for Jonah. I, I think that, um, you know, there, again, without giving away too much, there is a, I guess, a, a pretty uh, important scene between my character and her brother, which is, the, that's the role that's played by Jonah, um, at the very end of the movie. And that was the first scene we shot, um, and and you know not having had a chance to actually create the characters yet, not having had any dialogue up until that point, we had to somehow you know take the end of the film and the end of the story and and that crucial point at this brother sister relationship, uh, and and start off with that, and it's very emotional. And so I think for a second. We were, you know, worried how to do that. But then I remember while I was still in makeup, he came up to me and he started discussing ideas with me. And um, he, he, you know, he gave me his thoughts. And we had this very natural, immediate connection. And, and I think we created the relationship right then and there. And so by the time 
the cameras were rolling, we had um, we we had already established that relationship, and I think and I remember we were both crying, um, and it it was very emotional. And I guess as an actor, we always like to feel like things are real, right? We we like to not have to pretend. And that's really what happened for both of us. And I, I, I remember in the final edit of the film, there is um, Stephen actually decided to take the the shot of both of us. It's like a two shot. So instead of uh, editing that scene and using singles, he used the two shot. And I think it worked really well. Um, and, and Jonah, again, he's such a delight to to be around. He's so. Um, precise and specific and it's really inspiring to be next to him like he, he gets into this character without forcing it on others you know without being impo being imposing he just gets into this character and he makes you want to be a better actor too you know and and he it, he creates like an atmosphere the minute the camera rolls he creates this atmosphere and you just step into it and it's easy it's always easy to play with great actors, and I feel like Jeremy and Jonah both are great actors. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's take a quick break here and uh, let our sponsor get a word in, and we'll be right back. Country music fans may get a bad rap that they don't read enough, that they don't know enough about the history of country music. Well, maybe it's a matter of reading. Maybe you'd rather listen. I mean, you listen to music, right? So maybe you'd like to listen to a book about country music, about country music stars. You know, Audible has been a, a sponsor of Mr. Media on and off for most of the 10 years that we've been around. And uh, maybe you'd like to check out an Audible book on tape, right? Listen to it. Don't, don't worry about reading it. But So I went and looked to see what was available. How about Outlaw, Waylon, Willie, Chris, and the Renegades of Nashville? That's by Michael Streisguth. That sounds good. How about The Dow of Willie? A Guide to the Happiness in Your Heart by Willie Nelson and Turk Pipkin. How about The Man Called Cash, The Life, Love, and Faith of an American Legend? That's by Steve Turner. And that one's narrated, get this, by Chris Christopherson, himself a legend of country music. Well, you can get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial today by signing up at www.audible.com. All right, one more time. Mr. Media listeners, you can get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial today by signing up at www.audible.com slash try now. That's T-R-Y-N-O-W. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, so we're back from the break. Um, I want to ask you, in a, in a situation like this, you were talking before the break about um, – how much work you would put in ahead of time for, for the character. And you mentioned that Jeremy did and, and Jonah as well. The question I have is you go in knowing this is a small budget film. Um, right. it, you know, you may, you may see some money from it one day. You may not. You're going to put in, apparently you put in the same work. What, yeah. what, what motivates you to take a role like this in a small film and hope for the best? Uh, well, it's the quality of the role, really, and the quality of the script and, you know, the quality of the other actors as well. And the idea that it might be fun, that that kind of shoot might allow you to do something you might not be able to do on a big movie set where there's a lot of time pressure and a lot of money at stake. And, you know, a lot of times, in my experience, very big budget productions tend to be very restrictive. You know, there's time pressure and, and a director with a vision. And and sometimes, like in this case, uh, especially with Stephen, who is so open to, you know, uh, getting his, his actor's input, um, uh, you, you, you get a chance to be, to actually create something and develop something and play around and be free and create something you might not be able to create in, in a big budget production where you're following somebody else's vision or, you know, budget constraints or whatever. So in this case, we all, I feel like we all individually up front put in a lot of work. And then on set, we'd still keep on working. We'd rehearse scenes, we'd like improvise, we'd uh, sometimes even change a scene around completely. Even, you know, sometimes vital scenes of the script would be like changed on the spot 
um, when we realized that things weren't working the way we thought they would. And, and, and obviously, you know, having the time is, I mean, if I have the time and I get this opportunity, why would I not do it? You know, and I have the time. This was like possibly the best, best Christmas time I had, um, you know, in, in a while. Cause, cause you know, Christmas right before Christmas tends to be pretty slow in, in Hollywood. And so being able to be on set with people I really like and, uh, you know, to, to, to really create something felt really good and then you don't mind going over time and you know driving home late and being there early and uh, it's just a very fulfilling experience there are some moments of great uh, stress and tension uh, between you and uh, uh, Jeremy and then uh, basically between uh, Jonah's character Gilligan and and, and both of you uh, yeah how, particularly with Jeremy, I guess, how would you break the tension at the end of the scene? Or how would you, you know, how do you come off of that? You mean, like, how do we go back to being friends? At yeah, the end? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's know, easy. It's I acting, just... I know, you're pretending, but, I mean. No, you know. well, I, yeah, I mean, no, you're not. We weren't. It's just, it's a different type of emotional quality, I guess. And then the way you break it is, I mean, we, we did have fun with it, right? So usually at, at the end of a very awkward, tense scene, we just break out into laughter, you know, and, and decide that the next take, we do more of that <laughs> and make it even more awkward, you know? Um, I guess that's one of Steven's, Steven's biggest compliments. Um, our director's biggest compliment was like, oh, that was so strange, you know, that was so crazy, it was so creepy. So I guess we were trying to go for more of that. And, there, yeah. there are definitely moments between you and Jeremy that are very awkward and uncomfortable to watch, and deliberately yeah. so. Um, and what I wondered is, uh, okay, so uh, you are Austrian, right? Right. You're in. We're talking to you today. You're in Austria. You you spend time in Hollywood. You spend time in China. I know you do a lot of, uh, I guess, film and TV work there. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel uh, somewhat alien, a little bit foreign, pretty much wherever you go, because you know you're. You, you, unlike most people, you work in a lot of different places. You speak different languages. Uh, does that give? So for this role particularly, I wondered if feeling a little foreign wasn't a bad thing. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I mean, I guess you're right. I do feel alien pretty much wherever I go. Uh, even even in like my you know native Austria. I occasionally feel like maybe a little bit too worldly, too cosmopolitan, uh, you know, and I've been told that I'm not down to earth enough at times. <laughs> but I guess I'm not because I'm always up in the air. Literally, I'm like on a plane and constantly jet lagged. I mean, but um, so I feel like maybe the experience of standing out did give me the courage to, you know, dare and stand out and be strange even more. I mean, this. You know, I mean, like, you know, when we grow up, like growing up, we always try to fit in, right? This is like the the high school, our high school, everyone's high school experience is trying to fit in, not be too noticeable, be part of gra of a crowd, of a group. But in this case, I really embraced being different and dragging out moments where it was just being really awkward. And it was kind of liberating, I have to say. So how does a, an Austrian-born actress wind up shooting all over the world the way you do. How, what was the break that caused the, the opportunity for this to happen? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, the break, uh, my, my break, if you will, or um, really what brought me to Hollywood after, you know, having starred in a number of uh, films and television shows and stage plays in Austria um, was a, um, a manager and former casting director who's now still my manager, uh, Stancy Stokes. She was a friend of a friend and she contacted me after she had submitted me for the lead role on, a, again, a sci-fi trilogy. Um, and uh, basically told me that she had already submitted me for one of the leads on that, that film. And um, uh, she's, she's uh, originally Austrian also. I think she was born in Austria and then moved to the US as a kid. But she always maintained that kind of relationship with Austria and the love for Austria. So she was aware of my work here in Austria. 
And she's like, I love your work. I submitted you for the lead on, on one, of, one of the leads on this film. And, uh, and the director and producer really like you. Would you be willing to come here uh, this weekend? And it was Thursday already. So I, you know, I booked a flight for Saturday. I arrived Sunday. I had brunch with the producer and director of that film. Uh, we did a screen test on Monday, and they cast me right away. So at that point, I was like, wow, this is a really great opportunity. I was actually supposed to shoot a different film, a horror film in, in, in Iceland at the time. And I had already signed the contract when I realized that these two projects were overlapping by five days. So I had to make a choice. I was like, okay, I can't do both. What's it going to be, a European indie film or a potentially pretty, you know, large science fiction trilogy in the U.S.? And I ended up, you know, choosing that. And classic showbiz story. The minute I made the choice and got out of the contract on the Icelandic film, the movie fell apart. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I was picked up a few years later. At that point, it had been turned into an animation movie and was produced out of a, a studio in Bollywood. Uh -huh. And instead of playing one of the leads, I actually played the lead character. Um, or at least I, I lend her my voice. Uh -huh. Um, so we, we filmed part one of that already and then there's going to be two, uh, two more sequels. Um, anyway, long story short, it, this project gave me the opportunity to like get a, my first visa and uh, you know, later I found out that Stancy was not just the casting director on that project, she was also a manager and she offered me representation and then um, through her I met a, a great agent who um, opened a lot of doors in Hollywood and got me into a lot of rooms and seen by a lot of people and and I guess that was possibly the, the that was the best possible introduction to Hollywood anybody could have had I was I guess really lucky at the time and I didn't even know it you know like uh, obviously now I'm very aware of how competitive Hollywood is and how hard you have to work and how you have to keep working and how many like great talented good-looking people there are and how hard it is to stand out, you know. But at the time, I didn't even realize the opportunities that, you know, I had. I, I was literally going to, you know, three auditions a day during my first pilot season in L.A. And auditioning for leads on, on major shows and, and uh, you know, big parts on big budget movies. So, um, so yeah, I guess now it's just a matter of time of, of waiting for the work I put in to pay off and really also get those parts. Well, I, I imagine people who see Flytrap will be pleased and you'll see more opportunities from that. Um, and uh, folks, let me tell you, you can see Flytrap starring our guest, Ina Alice Cope, via uh, iTunes, Vudu, Video On Demand, and digital download from your local digital cable provider. Uh, is there a website, uh, Twitter, Facebook, where people can find you online? Yes, there is a flytrap page on Facebook. I'm not sure if there is a Twitter page. It's also available on Amazon, by the way. Oh. Amazon US, UK, Germany, and one other country, I believe. And it's going to be available on DVD uh, from October 11. Right. So. And so, but do you, uh, do you have a, a, a website or your own Twitter account or Facebook? I have a Twitter account. I have a Facebook page. Um, I have a, well, that might only be interesting for the Asian viewers. Uh, I have a, um, a Weibo page, a WeChat account, a Tudo page. Um, so, yes, I am, I am online and on social media. Very good. Well, uh, Ina Alice Cope, uh, just a delight to uh, meet you. Uh, enjoy the mo movie a great deal. Uh, you, you have, you're, as you say, your character has a great arc in this. We, we go from, well, I don't want to say, but we, it, it's a really good arc. Uh, you're a lovely woman, and I want to say thank you very much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to meet you, too.
before a studio audience full of aliens, and not the kind that any dumb wall will ever keep out, in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Did you blanch a little bit at erotic? Is that bad? I did. No, I just didn't expect it to be erotic. I mean, I guess that was sort of the goal, but I, I guess I'm glad we succeeded.